This clip is brought to you by SaveWithConrad.com. I saw that one coming all the way down to Mississippi. There you go. Track it. Track it. Opponent, the Barbarian, can make that same transition from tag team to singles competition. I don't know, Mean Gene. He's one of the greatest physical specimens I have ever seen. And with that rodent manager of his, he's a double threat. I'll have to keep my eyes on both of them, but I will survive. Arriba! All right, let's get back out to ringside. There you see Tito Santana headed down. Arriba. You know, he was legitimately like no kidding around Dave Silva's favorite wrestler growing up. Yeah. I think I've heard that story. I just think it's cool that, you know, and that was clearly what Vince was going for. Even his dad, you know, back in the, the WWF days where you would have, Hey, we've got Bruno for the Italian fans and Hey, we got Pedro. And I mean, he, he had different sort of ethnicities, whatever you were into. You know, you, you want an Irish guy? I got you one. You want a Polish guy? I got you one. You're an Italian guy? I got you one. And, uh, here in the eighties and nineties, Tito Santana is here for little Hispanic kids like Dave Silva, Silva. And it was his favorite dude, man. Nothing wrong with that. And, uh, decades before that, it was Pedro Morales. Absolutely. So, yeah, I like it. Also, I, I think I need to say here because. You always, uh, for you hog watchers out there, what for you hog watchers out there, Tito Santana, what you, I think, what I think, uh, I think really had low key, big hog. Wait a minute. Are you, the, I think so. Just a minute. It, yeah, a lot, a lot of times it's the, but, it's the, it's the color of the trunks I, that accentuate the hog. But do you just a few minutes ago. You're, Notice it. You, I mean, it's but you, it's gigantic. But uh, it's like a chorizo. Just a couple minutes ago, you were busting my balls because we were talking about how you sometimes beat off into a solo cup, uh, watching you, Whitney you, Wright look, after you look, chug a yoo hoo. Yeah, and and how Matt Coon is is right. definitely well. That's that's just talking stories. What I'm doing here is a visual. That you can't watch this match without noticing the Loki Big Hog. You can't. Oh, I, I've never know. I've seen this match a hundred times. I've never noticed. Well, notice now, my God, my God, it's bulging out there. I just, uh, you know, here's the deal. Sometimes you just keep, you, you do what you can. You can't hide it. I would think. <clears throat> I've never had that problem. So, uh, anyway, boy, the barbarian, tough guy. Ooh. Just an observation. I just like to make observations on this. Look at that. He went down. I don't know what's going on here. Oh, yeah, you do. It's, it's life, man. It's, it's life. Can I, uh. Can I tell you, I've discovered something at my house. Yeah, please. A, uh, a realtor friend of mine posted something on social media showing this little thing that you can hang on your door and it will keep your dogs from barking and going absolutely fucking bonkers at the door. My God. It's really? It's like a dog whistle, but in reverse. So you can okay. like set it to low. And whenever they start to go nuts, it puts out this tone that we can't hear, but they do. And it makes them not want to bark. So I thought, well, that sounds like bullshit. And I went and looked it up on Amazon. Turns out it's legit. It has a ton of great reviews. So I tried it and Kevin Sullivan at my house went from going nuts 4,000 times a day to like twice a day. Wow. Yeah. So I liked it so much that now I'm getting it for the garage door and the front door and my bathroom door. <laughs> I mean, I'm going to have these fucking things all over where I'll be able to hopefully have a normal conversation without it sounding like I'm Ace Ventura. Mm. Well, I got a feeling about that. What? 
you need to let those dogs bark. That's part of their natural habitat. Hey, speaking of natural that, habitat. That, that, that's what they do. Okay. So is that what you do with Lois? You just let her be in her natural habitat, let her do what she does? Yes, I do. Here's the other They're, thing you need to know about my dogs. All right. Okay. My wife takes them to the goddamn beauty shop once a month. Okay. They come home with haircuts that cost more than my own fucking haircut. <laughs> and they've got goddamn blowouts and their nails trimmed. Sometimes they got fucking bows in their hair and painted toenails. These are fucking dogs, bro. And you're over here talking to me about let them bark. <laughs> they got puffy feet and skinny legs. And I mean, just they got afros. And one of my dogs had a goddamn top knot for a year. It had, I know baby did baby had a fucking top knot for a year. It, it was so cute. And you're over here talking about let them bark. You need to let them bark. That's what they do. Well, we should let them, you know, have normal fucking haircuts too. <laughs> and we should probably also only let them piss and shit outside and not be like puppy pad training, fucking grown dogs. There's a lot of weird shit happening in my house since I'm married now. You well, hear me? Yeah, well, yeah, I get it. So you need to address this with Megan and not me. No, I ain't addressing shit. If I've learned yeah. anything from you, it's just let them do whatever they want <laughs> until you can't take it anymore. And then just walk downstairs and say, is this the kitchen or a goddamn landfill? And then duck and get in your new fucking Ford Explorer and haul ass to dynamite. <laughs> How's that? <laughs> Uh, wow. Hey, hey, it's Conrad Thompson. Thanks for checking out the podcast here on YouTube. Be sure to hit the subscribe button and the notifications bell so you get a notice anytime we upload some new content. And go save yourself some money right now. If you're in a 30 year loan or you have credit card debt, it's not a matter of if I can save you money, it's a matter of how much. Find out right now for free at savewithconrad.com.